Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jeremy Snodgrass, youth pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. Today I want to talk to you about greater things. I'm sorry, uh, the U version. we got the the scripture on it, but because uh, it was a last minute thing, we didn't get all of the notes on the U version. but you can, the scripture's on there, and then you can also still take notes uh, as go through. Um, but today I want to talk about greater things. And we know as we look through the Word of God, the Word of God is full of stories and examples of people that God used in great ways. We can, the, the vast number, it, it would take me um, all day just to begin to share all the stories of the different people that God used to do great things, to do greater things. And I want to read John chapter 14, verses 11 uh, through 13. It says this. It says, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works himself. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So we begin to think about that, and um, as you go back and you look at people like Abraham, Abraham, you see just an incredible story. Abraham made a decision. Abraham left all that he knew. He left all that he knew, the, the family, the land, everything that he knew. He left it to follow God because God wanted to use him to start a great nation, a great nation that would be separate from the way that the world was, that was going and the way the people were living. God was trying to call out a holy and a separate people for himself. And you saw Abraham who made that sacrifice and left everything to follow God. What a great thing. What an awesome thing um, God did in Abraham. And, and when God um, used him and Abraham responded and surrendered, great things happened. You look at uh, Moses when he built the ark and you see I was just checking to see if you guys were awake today. I said when Moses built the ark, okay? I was just like, nobody, I, nobody even flinched. So, so we got to wake up a little bit, okay? Moses did not build the ark, okay? Um, how many caught it when I said it? All right, okay, I was just making sure. I thought you guys were sleeping. And so, so when Noah uh, built the ark, you know, you're thinking that, oh, yeah, I went and, uh, um, you know, two, three months, he had that ark built. But no, it was a process of, most people believe, of 100 years uh, that that process happened. And, and he stayed faithful and stayed faithful and stayed faithful. And God used Noah to preserve uh, to preserve the, the human race. God's creation, he, he used him to do that. You look at Nehemiah, and Nehemiah got a heart uh, for Jerusalem and went and saw that the walls uh, were, were in shambles. And because the walls were in shambles, they weren't living in the city. The Jewish people were, were not populating the city of uh, Jerusalem. And uh, the population was low. And most pe- people lived in the surrounding areas and not in the city, mainly because uh, the walls were not uh, built. And then you see Nehemiah come in with the heart. And in 52 days, in 52 days, Nehemiah organized um, for the walls to be rebuilt and done in 50 two days as the final gate was put on on the 52nd day. And so you see great things, incredible things that God has used many people. You see Moses who led a nation out of bondage, who surrendered to what God's will was and led a nation out of bondage, out of slavery, and and led them for years and years in the ways of God. Then you see the disciples, Jesus' disciples, and you see Um, them begin to lead a newborn church. How many know that's not easy to lead a newborn church? Just read the word. And there was a lot of things going on. They had to, they had to uh, deal with this. They had to deal with that. And there was constantly uh, things that were coming up. Is it, well, what? I believe this. I believe that. I believe him. I believe her. I believe this. And they had to constantly go through, but were able to establish an incredible work that God is still continuing, why we are here today, that God is still continuing uh, to do on that foundation that was led by them. Then you think um, about the Christians from that point, from that day on, when the church was born, as Jesus Christ gave his life,
life for us and the church uh, was born, we see Christians, countless testimonies of Christians who have done great things. We see even in that day, they might have not been named by name, but you'll see in the book of Acts that they were doing the work of God, that every single day, more and more and more people's lives were being changed because Christians were going out and telling people about Jesus. They were meeting together, and every day, you might not see their names and every name of every Christian, but we know that Christians were out doing great things, and because of that, every day, the world was being changed as more and more people came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and who he is. And so we read earlier in John chapter 14, We read as Jesus begins to describe and and talk about that, hey, I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I'm going to the Father, and everything that you see me do, you will do greater things than these. How many know that that's exciting? That's exciting. That is awesome. That is incredible. But sometimes we uh, we get this attitude or these thoughts that it's always for somebody else. That it's always for this person or that person, or they're going to do great things. Or it's for, it's for the, the big-name preachers or the big-name uh, missionaries. That's who that scripture is talking about. But today, we've got to realize that that scripture and Jesus was talking to all of us, every single one of us that called upon the name of the Lord, that he has great things in store for us, great things that he wants to do through us, in us, and we've got to understand that, and we've got to realize just who we are in Christ. Just realize what God has for us. We are destined for greatness. Come on. Every single one of us are destined for greatness, and like I said, we don't see in the Word of God the name of every Christian in that new church that was doing But you know what? It was rampant. They were all doing it. They were all doing great things for the Lord. Listen, God has destined for each and every one of us as individuals to greatness. And we know that from John chapter 14. We can see that in God's Word that that's what God's plan is for us. But how many know that when God has a plan that the enemy will do everything he can to stop it. You know, the last thing that the enemy wants is for God's people to live out John chapter 14 and to understand and realize the great things that God has for them. And if he can stop that, he will do anything he can to do that. And there's, there's the things that we have, to, we have to combat. There's things that we have to uh, push aside in order to, to see God move in our life. But the enemy will use different things to try to stop those great things from happening. How many has ever known somebody that honestly, man, they were just talented. I mean, the hand of God was all over them, and you're just like, oh, my goodness, what is God going to do through them? But then the next thing you know, you see that entire life derailed in the same person that you're like, oh, my goodness, what? God is just going to do great things. The next thing you know, you see him over here paralyzed, not, you know, spiritually paralyzed. Um, And how many's ever ever seen that? And how many's ever, I've seen that um, in the last 20 years. I've seen that over and over and over again because I knew that God had great things for them, but yet they would begin to be paralyzed. We have to shut out. The very first thing that we have to do to see this greatness in our life is we have to shut out the voices of doubt. We have to shut out the voices of doubt. Listen, we know, we know that the enemy is going to lie to us. The enemy is going to put lies in our life. He's going to put temptations in our life, and we have to shut those voices up. We have to shut them out. You know, the enemy will try to tell us and always remind us just about how no good that we are. Come on. You know what I'm saying? The enemy will always try to remind us. To heal. He'll take those darts and just try to, try to fling them at you, those thoughts of that you are no good, that you are no good. And if he can make you believe that you are no good, then you're going to start living like you're no good. Like you don't have greatness in you because of Jesus Christ. And if he can convince you 
that that greatness is not there, that he can stop you from being great in Christ. Come on. But it's not just lies of telling you that you're no good. The enemy will use any kind of lie, any kind of deception that he can think of. He did it with Jesus Christ. When you look at that, when you look at the story of Jesus Christ, did he go to Jesus and say, Jesus, don't you realize that you are no good? Don't you realize that you, there's, you're nothing? You have no power. I don't even know why you even think that you can do this. Is that what he did? What did he do? He began saying, listen, come over here. You see all of this? He says, I will make you king over all of this. I will put you above. I'll give you all of this. I will do this. I will do that. Sometimes the lies of the enemy are just distraction lies. He'll try to get you instead of following this, this, this ultimate plan of God, he'll try to get you to follow this plan right here. And it might look good. It might look good, and sometimes we become distracted in our walk with God, and the enemy will distract us with this, this, and this, things that don't seem so bad, but yet they're lies and tricks of the enemy because he's trying to keep you from this. He's trying to keep you from this, and a lot of times we don't even realize the great things and the greatness that God has in store for each and every one of us, and I believe 100% that it is for every single one of us. Every single one of us that God has placed this in our life. He is saying, listen, don't you understand that I am there? And anything that you ask for in my name, for my will, for my kingdom, I will give you. Have we forgot that? You know, sometimes we just, we, we become, uh, we allow our thoughts and to, to kind of just stop us and the doubt to stop us. Well, man, you know what? We need, a, uh, we need a new building. It's just way too much money. You know, we, we, need, to, we, need, to, we need some more, some more rooms for our kids. We need some, it's just, it's just too much money. And it's like, next thing you know, this plan for greatness that God has for us, it gets stopped by our thoughts. It gets stopped and it gets paralyzed by what we're thinking. So we have to watch for the lies of the enemy and the tricks of the enemy because he doesn't want you to achieve that greatness in Christ. He wants to give you an alternate plan or he just wants to destroy you with his lies, telling you just of how bad you are and that you can't do anything. But how many know that when the blood of Jesus Christ is in our life, that we are righteous and we are holy before God? Come on now. I say because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now listen, we also have to uh, shut out the the voices of doubt that come from other people. You know, sometimes, sometimes even people, they, they might have the best intentions, but how many, how many have ever been told something or said something to people that just destroyed you? Even if they didn't even mean to destroy you, but it, it just, it just destroyed you. You know, I mean, how, come on now, how many's ever been there? And and people said things, and then there's other times, and we talked about uh, even before, you know, there's times uh, where people will, will speak negative things into your life. We need to get those voices out. And if people are speaking negative into our life, then we need to, um, we need to get ourselves away from those people because that's not what God's truth is for our life. We've got to get those voices of doubt and the negative things that people say. If, if you have faith and you believe that Christ wants to do great things in you, but the person's telling you, well, yeah, yeah, I didn't. you know what? Hey, it's time to find somebody else. Come on now. It's time to find a new friend. Somebody, it's time to find some voices that are going to speak the truth of God into your life and know that you are destined for great things. Every single one of us. We need to realize this as God's church, that all of us, all of us have greatness in us because the blood of Jesus covers our life. And because he is great, we can have greatness in our life. That's who our God is. We have to shut those voices of other people and the lies of other people that will try to stop us from being who God calls us to be. And then the, the, the last voices of doubt that we have to shut out is the lies that we tell ourselves. Sometimes we are our biggest enemy. Sometimes we are so good at convincing ourselves that we can't do that. We can't do this. I'm just going to mess up again. Why should I even try? 
Sometimes we are the voices and the biggest voices that stop us from the greatness that God has for us. Sometimes we just can't let go of our mistakes. You know, I was, uh, I was listening to uh, a song this morning by um, David Crowder and just on the way in and just talking about um, how he loves us and how, you know, how many, you know, that song, how he loves us and stuff. And I just love that song so much. Probably talked to you guys about it before because I love that song. Uh, just talking about how, you know, that we're, we're just a, a tree that, that is bent, uh, you know, uh, by, the, by the wind of his grace and his mercy and how he loves us and how he loves us and how he loves us. Sometimes we ourselves are our greatest enemies of accepting that grace and that mercy. But listen, you need to speak truth into your life. That truth that you are God's child. That you are God's child. And because I am God's child, then I have greatness in me because of Jesus Christ that is in me. And Jesus Christ is with me. He is for me. And because of that, because of that, I can stand before God, holy and righteous before him. We have to shut the voices of doubt out of our life. And then we have to live the truth. The truth is, like I just said, is that we are a child of God. Come on now. My daddy is awesome. Come on now. My dad is awesome. My dad is so awesome that he created me. He created us. My dad is so awesome that there is nothing outside of his reach. My, God, my dad is so awesome. When you, listen, when you begin to think about just how awesome our Heavenly Father is, it should encourage us. And we need to hold on to that truth that we are a tri- child of God. And John 14 says, Jesus Christ um, himself said, listen, you will do greater things than you saw me do. And you guys know that the books probably wouldn't even contain All of the miracles that Jesus did while he was here on earth. All of the things that Jesus did. The books wouldn't even contain everything. That's how much he did. And he's telling us, his children, that you're destined for greater things than I did. Now listen, when are we going to start living that? When are we going to start holding on to that truth? Because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's what God's plan is. God's plan is for us to grab onto that truth, hold on to that truth. The truth is, is that every single one of us have a great purpose. You know, I, I love hearing testimonies about, how many just get encouraged when you hear testimonies of people who just surrender and give their life to God and it encourages you and it, and it spurs you on, it spurs me on. And I've read testimonies of, of uh, men and women that didn't get saved until they were like in their 70s. And God just, I mean, literally from 70 until the time they passed away, they were overseas in missions field. They were telling everybody they knew about Jesus. And I read these testimonies and it just encourages me. It doesn't matter what stage we are in life. God still has greatness for us. God still has great things for us to do. Whether Whether you're 100 and in a nursing home, I believe that God still has great things for you to do because there's people there that don't know Jesus. Come on. There's people there that need to be encouraged. There's people there that need to see the greatness of Jesus. It doesn't matter what stage you're in. God has a great purpose for each and every one of you. We have to hold on to that truth. We have to hold on. And the truth is this. The world needs you. Your place of work needs you. Your school needs you. The world needs you to walk in the greatness that God has destined for you to walk in. Come on now. The world needs Christians to begin to walk in the greatness that God has called you And I I say more so than ever, we've always needed it, but my goodness, we need to walk 
in that greatness. We need to walk in that faith and that authority into the world. We need to walk in it because the world needs it more than anything. You know, Pastor and I have talked uh, many times and we, about this subject and about, you know, what, what is it that, what is it that the, the, we need so bad? Because honestly, it's really, it's actually really scary um, what's going on even in the church. Um, in this generation uh, coming up, the generation coming up, honestly, guys, um, I'm just telling you, I work with them. I see it. Even, listen, even ones that have grown up in the church from the time they were a baby, are, they struggle with compromise. They struggle with black and white. And they take the line of the word of God and the truth of the word of God that is just a black line, that you do, this is it, and they turn it into gray and they mix it together. And, they're begin, and I'm telling you, it's rampant in this generation. And they become more consumed, listen, more consumed with themselves than other people. And what they want to do, and what they want to say is okay to do, how they want to live. And I'm telling you, it is rampant. And I'll be honest with you, um, it, it shakes me in my inner core sometimes just as I see what's happening and the, the twist that I see even in the church in that younger generation. Uh, it, it's, it's scary, to be honest with you. And so Pastor and I have talked about it. You know, honestly, the thing that we need is for people and Christians, men and women, to start standing up and walking in the greatness of God. And when they begin to do that, we're going to see a revival, a spirit-filled revival in this place. Come on, we're going to see it. And that's, listen, it's not, it's not um, a hundred-step class to walking away from the gray. You know, it's, it, we need People to start living out their destiny, walking in the greatness and us seeing the power of God move. And the power of God change people's lives through us. The world needs us. As you look back, and these people that I even mentioned before, some of them I mentioned before, Abraham. Abraham, he did this, he did great things. Abraham also messed up really bad. Abraham tried to take God's plan for his life and try to make it happen himself. And still to this day, listen, still to this day, that mistake that he made has haunted the people of Israel still to this day. It's the truth. He decided to take it in, into his own hands of having a child when God had other plans. But he got impatient. And still to this day, Still to this day, it haunts the nation of Israel, that mistake. Noah, you see Noah, after everything's over, you see him in a drunken state. You look, and you see Moses losing his temper. And by losing his temper, sometimes didn't do exactly what God told him to do or how God told him to do it. You see examples of the disciples who ran and scattered instead of staying strong and staying by Jesus' side. You see examples of Christians all over the world today that have made mistake after mistake after mistake. But the truth is, the truth is, none of us, none of us are perfect. And the truth is, is God wants to use even our mistakes to his glory for his purpose. So if you think that you're not good enough, just begin going and looking and reading through the people of the word of God and just see all the mistakes that they made. But God still, in his great mercy, in his great forgiveness, use them for great things. Every single one of us today, every single one of you in this room, God has destined you for great things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God. God, I, I just want to say, Lord God, it's just a privilege, Lord God, to be called a child of God. And God, I pray today, Lord Jesus, 
that, Father, your church will begin to rise up and that we will begin to live out John 14, Lord God, that we will begin to understand the greatness that you have for each and every one of us, Lord. God, I pray, Father, that you, Lord Jesus, will instill in us, Lord God, the destiny, Lord God, that you have given us, Lord. Father, let us begin to walk in it. Let us shut out the voices of doubt, Lord God, and let us live the truth today, Lord Jesus. And God, I pray, Father, this moment, this day, God, let us start living in greatness, Lord God. God, our names may never be posted for all to see. But Lord God, let us do it for your glory and for your glory alone. God, let us walk in your greatness. And God, I pray today, Lord Jesus, every person in this place, let them understand that you have greatness for them. That it's not done, it's not over, the, the race has not been finished. But Lord God, you have great things in store for them, Lord God. God, let us live to serve your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. We love you guys today. God bless you. You guys have a wonderful day.